Patrice de McMahon, Duke of Magenta, 6th Marquis of McMahon, 1st Duke of Magenta, French pronunciation, Patis de Machma, born Marie Edme Patrice Maurice, 13 June 1808 – 17 October 1893, was a French general and politician, with the distinction of Marshal of France. He served as Chief of State of France from 1873 to 1875 and as the second President of the French Third Republic, from 1875 to 1879. McMahon won national renown and the French presidency on the basis of his military actions in the war against the Germans. McMahon was a devout conservative Catholic, a traditionalist who despised socialism and strongly distrusted the secular Republicans. He took seriously his duty as the neutral guardian of the Constitution and rejected suggestions of a monarchist coup d'état. He also refused to meet with Gambetta, the leader of the Republicans. He moved for a parliamentary system in which the Assembly selected the ruling government of the Third Republic, but he also insisted on an upper chamber. He later dissolved the Chamber of Deputies, resulting in public outrage and a Republican electoral victory. Soon after McMahon resigned and retired to private life. Biography <inaudible> 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 Family origins The Mac Mahon family is of Irish origin. They claim to be descendants of the Dáil Gcai's Lords of Munster and were Lords of Corku Bisond in Ireland. After losing much of their land in the Cromwellian confiscations, a branch moved to Limerick for a time before settling in France during the reign of King William III because of their support of the deposed King James II in the Glorious Revolution they applied for French citizenship in 1749. After the definitive installation of the family in France, their nobility was recognized by the patent letter of King Louis XV of France. A military family 14 members of the House of de Mac Mahon were in the army, they settled in Autun, Burgundy, at the Château de Sully, where Patrice de Mac Mahon was born on 13 June 1808, 16th and the second last son of Baron Maurice François de Mac Mahon Baron of Sully, Count de Mac Mahon and de Charnay, and Pelagie de Riquette de Caraman a descendant of Pierre-Paul Riquette. Patrice de McMahon as he was usually known before being elevated to a ducal title in his own right was born in Sully near Autun, in the département of Saône et Loire. He was the 16th of 17 children of a family already in the French nobility. His grandfather Knight Lord Overlord Jean-Baptiste de McMahon, was named Marquis de McMahon and first Marquis d'Aiguille from his wife Charlotte Le Bélin, Dame d'Aiguille, by King Louis XV, and the family in France had decidedly royalist politics. Early military career and service in Algeria In 1820, McMahon entered the Petit Seminaire des Marbres at Autun, then completed his education at Lycée Louis Le Grand at Paris. He then entered the Special Military School at Saint Cyr on 23 October 1825. He then joined the application school at the General Staff Headquarters on 1 October 1827, for a period of two years. Following his graduation from de Saint-Cyr, McMahon entered the French army in 1827. He was assigned to the 4th Hussards Regiment in 1830. McMahon subsequently participated in the French conquest of Algeria as a sous lieutenant in the 20th Line Infantry Regiment. He was commended for his capacity and bravery during the seizure of Algiers. On 24 November 1830, McMahon further distinguished himself while serving with his regiment, during the Medea expedition, during the Battle of Musea Mountain. He was awarded the Knight Order of the Legion d'Honneur. Recalled to France, McMahon participated in 1832 to the Ten Days Campaign where he was noticed again during the Siege of Antwerp. He became a captain in 1833, and returned to Algeria, this time, in 1836 where he was placed under the orders of General Bertrand Clausel, and then General Charles-Marie Denis de Damrimont. He led several audacious cavalry raids across tribal-occupied plains and distinguished himself during the Siege of Constantine, in 1837, where he was slightly wounded. In 1840, he left Africa Algeria, and upon his return to France, he learnt that he had been promoted to chef d'escadron cavalry squadron chief. 
In May 1841, he returned again to Algeria at the head of the 10th Chasser Battalion of Pied with whom he distinguished himself with, in April, at the Battle of Bab el Thaza and against the troops of Amir Abdelkader, on 25 May. On 31 December 1842, he was promoted to lieutenant colonel at the 2nd Regiment of the French Foreign Legion II Reele. In 1843, he assumed the functions of regimental commander, by replacing the Il Holder, a command which he kept until 1845. McMahon distinguished himself again during the Battle of Chab el Gidda and the Battle of Ain Kebira on 14 October and 17 October 1844. Nominated to colonel in December 1845, he assumed the command of the 41st Line Infantry Regiment, garrisoned at Marnia. Since 1848, McMahon was nominated at the head of the subdivision of Tlemcen, where he was designated as a general de brigade on 12 June of the same year. In 1849, he became a commander of the Order of the Legion d'Honneur, and served under General Aimable Pelizier, chief of the general staff of the Oran province. In 1852 McMahon organized in Algeria the plebiscite of legitimation by universal suffrage destined to approve the French coup d'état of 1851. In March the same year he was appointed commandment of the Constantine Division, before being promoted to General de Division, in July. Crimean War, Sevastopol During the Crimean War, he was given command of the 1st Infantry Division of the 2nd Orient Army Corps and, in September 1855, he won a victory at the Battle of Malakoff during the Siege of Sevastopol. During the battle he is reputed to have said, "'Here I am, here will I stay' French, j'y suis, j'y reste. <laughs> Senator and further Algerian service After his return to France, he received a number of honours and was appointed senator. Desiring a more active life, he refused a senior position in the French Metropolitan Army, and returned to Algeria. Here where he served against the Kabyles. On his return to France, he voted as senator against the unconstitutional law on general security, proposed after the failed assassination attempt of Felice Orsini against Emperor Napoleon III. Magenta, Marshal of France McMahon distinguished himself during the Italian campaign of 1859. He advanced his troops without having received orders at a critical moment during the Battle of Magenta, which assured French victory. For his military services, he was appointed a Marshal of France by Emperor Napoleon III, and awarded the title of Duke of Magenta. Governor-General of Algeria In 1861 McMahon represented France at the coronation of William I as King of Prussia. In 1864, he was named as Governor-General of Algeria. McMahon did not distinguish himself in this appointment. While he initiated several reforms, numerous complaints were made against him. During the first half of 1870, he submitted his resignation to Napoleon III. When the Olivier cabinet was formed, the emperor abandoned his Algerian projects and McMahon was recalled. War and the Paris Commune McMahon participated in the Franco-Prussian War. He suffered several defeats in Alsace and during the Battle of Sedan, where he was wounded. Overall his strategic planning appeared confused and marked by indecision. He was made prisoner during the capitulation of Sedan on 1 September. In 1871, he was nominated as the head of the Versailles Army which, under the orders of the French Third Republic, harshly repressed the Paris Commune, killing or capturing thousands of people. France surrendered to the Prussians in January 1871, and formed a new interim government based in Versailles. Radicals in Paris rejected this government and formed the Paris Commune. In May 1871, McMahon led the troops of the Versailles government against the Commune, in the bitter fighting of what was latter called La Semaine Sanglante, the Bloody Week. The government forces under McMahon crushed the Commune with many Communards being executed. He was not blamed for the repression, but instead became the hero of the hour for the right. <laughs> 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 
Topic: <laughs> President of the Republic. In May 1873, McMahon was elected President of the French Republic, with the support of monarchists and conservatives in the National Assembly. Only one vote was cast against him, renowned for his popularity. De Mac Mahon was elected President of the Republic by the majority of the Royalists at the Epoque, following the unsuccessful election of Adolphe Thiers on May 24, 1873. After sacking President Council Jules Armand Dufour, he replaced the latter with Duke Albert, 4th Duc de Broglie, a monarchist, projecting accordingly a restoration of the monarchy. However, the failure of this restoration drove the latter to a vote for the presidential septennate seven-year period mandate. This decision made the public loans reach the Paris Bourse. Even though a convinced royalist, he nevertheless did not meet Henri, Count of Chambord in November 1873, estimating his incapability of allying his duties as President of the Republic with the desires of the Prince." According to his great-granddaughter Elisabeth de Mirabel in La Liberté Souffre Violence, Plan, p. 31. With Duke Broglie as President of the Council, he adopted a series of «moral order» measures. With the Assembly, on 9 November 1873, having fixed his mandate to seven years, he declared, on 4 February 1874, that he would accordingly during seven years make respect of the legal order established. Preferring to remain au des partis on top of the parties, he observed rather than take part in the procedures which in January and February 1875 led to the French constitutional laws of 1875, which finally established the French Third Republic as the legal government of France. Mac Mahon deemed himself responsible in front of the country, more than the chambers, which led to bring conflicts with the latter. Yet McMahon also known as Magenta wrote in his still unpublished memoirs. By family tradition, and by the sentiments towards the royal house which were instilled in me by my early education, I could not be anything but a legitimist." He felt some repugnance, too, in forming, in 1876, the Dufour and the Jules Simon cabinets, in which the Republican element was represented. On 26 September 1875, he stayed at Vernon in the Ur department for several days, in order to prepare the grand maneuvers of the Third Army. Following the French legislative election, 1876, which were won by a Republican majority, he agreed with great reluctance to the formation of the third and fourth governments of Jules Dufour, and the government of third, and the government of Jules Simon, which were dominated by the Republicans. During the night of 23 June to 24 June 1875 the Garonne region suffered heavy flooding. While visiting the inundated cities and villages he declared, K do, K do, nothing but water, only water. The prefect of the department responded to him, et encore, Monsieur le Président, vous anin voice que le dessous, then again, Mr. President, you are only seeing what's above the surface. German Chancellor Otto von Bismarck sought to contain and destabilize France, and to weaken the right wing elements that wanted revenge against Germany. Bismarck attempted to promote republicanism in France by strategically and ideologically isolating McMahon's clerical monarchist supporters. Bismarck's containment policy almost got out of hand in 1875 during the «war in sight» crisis. There was a war scare in Germany and France when the German press reported that influential Germans, alarmed by France's rapid recovery from defeat in 1871 and its rearmaments program, were talking of launching a preventive attack on France. Britain and Russia made it clear that they would not tolerate such aggression. Bismarck did not seek war either, but the unexpected crisis forced him to take into consideration the alarm that his aggressive policies, plus Germany's fast-growing power, were causing among its neighbours, when the episcopal mandates of the bishops of Poitiers, Nimes and Nevers, recommending the sympathy of the French government in the case of Pius IX, were followed by a resolution of the Chamber of the Third Republic proposed by the leftist and asking the government to suppress the ultramontanism manifestations. Mac Mahon, twelve days later, asked Jules Simon to to resign, and constituted a conservative government under the direction of the Duc de Broglie, he convinced the Senate of the Third Republic to dissolve the chamber, and travelled across the country to ensure the success of the conservative elections, while protesting that he had no intention of overthrowing the Republic. This was referred to as the 16th of May 1877 crisis. Nevertheless, the elections of the 14th of October gave the left wing a majority of 120 seats, and Minister de Broglie accordingly resigned on the 19th of November. 
Mac Mahon attempted first to form a functionary government directed by General de Rochebue, the Gaetan de Rochebue government, but the chamber having refused to enter in contact with him, Rochebue resigned the next day, and the president recalled Dufour to form a left-wing government, the 5th 5th Dufour government. With the senatorial elections of 5 January 1879, having delivered the assembly to the leftists, Mac Mahon, who didn't have any more any sort of parliamentary support, preferred to resign on 30 January 1879, after having refused to sign a decree which revolved around confiscating and diminishing a number of military authorities and commands to certain generals. Leon Gambetta declared on 15 August 1877, Le Président na que ce choix, il lui faut se somètre au se démeter the President has only but one choice, he must submit or resign. His presidency may be summarized thus, on the one hand, he allowed the Republic to establish itself, on the other hand, so far as his lawful prerogatives permitted, he restrained the political advance of secular parties hostile to the Catholic Church, convinced that the triumph of radicalism would be to the detriment of the nation. McMahon headed a regime that was mildly repressive toward the left. Newspapers were prosecuted, senior officials were removed if they were suspected of support for republicanism. Critical pamphlets were suppressed while the government circulated its own propaganda. The proprietors of meeting places were advised not to allow meetings of critics of the regime. On the other hand, he gave no support to a coup d'état by monarchists. McMahon truly believed that the National Assembly should rule France and not the president. <laughs> Last years Memoirs from 1887 to 1893, he directed the Société de Secours aux Blessés Militaires (SSBM) Rescue Society of Wounded Military, which in 1940 became the French Red Cross. Patrice de Mac Mahon died on the 17th of October 1893 at Château de la Fort at Montcresson, after having written his memoirs, and was buried on the 22nd of October at the Hotel des Invalides after a state funeral and a religious mass at La Madeleine. The five cordons of the funeral chariot were held by General Victor Favrier, Grand Chancellor of the Légion d'Honneur, Emiral Henri Riennier, Minister de la Marine, General Julien Loisillon, Minister of War, Mr. Charles Merlin, of the Senate, and Mr. Malvi, from the Chamber. <laughs> Arms Honours Legion d'honneur LH Knight Order of the LH 1830 Officer Order of the LH 1837 Commander Order of the LH 1849 Grand Officer Order of the LH 1853 Grand Croix Order of the LH at a military title 1855 he was already a Grand Croix before being elected President of the Republic and was also Grand Master GM in Grand Quality in 1873. Médaille Militaire in 1857. Grand Cordon of the Order of Leopold, 1874. Knight Order of the Golden Fleece, 1875 Spain, Roman Catholic Order. Honorary Grand Cross of the Order of the Bath, United Kingdom. Grand Croix of the Order of the Black Eagle, Prussia. Topic. Battle honours Wounded four times, in 1837, at the Siege of Constantine, a bullet pierced his uniform, in 1840, a bullet pierced his sabre through the rib cage, in 1857 at the Battle of Echeridon, and finally seriously on 1 September 1870 at Sedan. Quotes In his voluntary retirement he carried with him the esteem of all parties, Jules Simon, who did not love him, and whom he did not love, afterwards called him. Showing his faith in the Foreign Legion during the Battle of Magenta. The Legion is here. It's in the bag. Voici la Légion. L'affaire est dans le sac. During the Siege of Sevastopol in the Crimean War, McMahon led an assault by French troops against the Malakoff Redoubt. McMahon captured the Malakoff, but was urged to withdraw rather than be crushed by imminent Russian counter-attacks. He refused, replying, J'y sways. J'y rest. Here I am, here I stay. 
McMahon's troops held the Malakoff, and Sevastopol soon fell. McMahon's line became widely quoted as an expression of defiance. P. G. Woodhouse's character Bertie Wooster used it in response to pressure from his valet Jeeves to shave off his new mustache. Gallery See also Origins of the French Foreign Legion Marie-Louis Henry de Granite La Croix de Chabrières François Certain Ken Robert Jean-Luc Carbucha François Achille Bazaine